Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. His name is Jared Knott. So, Jared, welcome. Yay! Good to be here. Great honor to be here. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. You are an author of an amazing book, but I think it's so interesting because so often the thing that people don't think about are all the little tiny little decisions they make every single day. And how can that impact their life in one way or another? Mm -hmm. And you have a book, Teeny right. Blunders, Big Disasters. Right. Um, 39 tiny mistakes that change the world forever. Right. So right. I'm so curious. First, I want to talk about some of these mistakes because there's some pretty good ones. I'll do a couple little teasers, but mm -hmm. I want to know a little bit about your background and why you decided to write this book. But I think it's so interesting. So an unopened letter saved the American cause in the Revolutionary right. War. Exactly. Oh, my gosh, right. I can't wait. So right. and then number two, um, a German pilot's small mistake saved Britain and changed the course of World War II. That's right. That's oh right. my gosh. That's right. Okay, those are just two teasers. But let's go ahead and let's start with you. How mm -hmm. did you decide to write this book? What what inspired you? Yes, it actually. Uh, in fact, it was Mitt Romney's father who, in the 1968 Republican convention, began with this antidote, which goes back to Benjamin Franklin even before that. That for one of the nail, the shoe was lost. For one of the shoe, the rider was lost. For one of the rider, the battle was lost. For one of the battle, the empire was lost. The empire was lost. All for the want of a nail. But how often does that really happen? A single tiny mistake dominoes into this, a great disaster, losing an empire. Well, 39 times at least, really, by the actual, uh, 39 is kind of a rhetorical number. It's really more like 40, 45 stories we have in the book about tiny mistakes that end up just blowing things to pieces for an empire or a nation. So, but we can, we got lots of examples. So uh, pick one and we can. Uh, wow. I mean, it really is. It's so much fun to think about that because, and I think about it from, you know, I love butterflies. I always wear butterflies and I, mm -hmm. I love to look at butterflies. And we often talk about how the flapping of wings of a butterfly mm -hmm. so often can change um things from a from a far distance and to me that's also like a distance in time you know one little decision and how it can ripple on out yes. and change so many things for people right. so let's start with the first one i love the unopened letter save the american cause in mm -hmm. the revolutionary war will you share this story with us Yes, yes. So at that particular point, uh, the American cause was beaten to a pulp. OK, we were at a low ebb. Uh, we just lost, but just been kicked out of uh, New York, a series of defeats. Uh, Washington had uh, men that had uh, were wearing uh, rags for, for shoes and when they would walk, there'd be blood in the snow. They were in desperate, desperate need of a victory. So he very uh, courageously and boldly decided to attack uh, Trenton, okay, and uh, it was held by uh, German Hessian soldiers, okay. Colonel Rawl, okay, was a professional uh, German soldier, had been in the uh, service for about, uh, for many years, he's like 50 years old, but it was Christmas Eve, okay, and the idea was that they would not be, the guard would be down on Christmas Eve, and he was at a party uh, playing chess, playing cards, drinking some wine, and a, a letter arrives, okay, from a spy, okay, and passed on to General Rawl. He takes the letter, okay, puts it inside of his breast pocket, does not open it, okay? And so it goes on drinking his wine, <laughs> playing his chess. I was okay. going to say, maybe a lot of, little extra wine there. A little extra <laughs> wine there. Somebody's, after all, it's Christmas Eve, something like that, okay? Goes to sleep, and Washington marches into the city, uh, and the the uh, Hessians are not on guard, okay? And he takes them by surprise. A lot of ugly fighting, a lot of hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, uh, -hand, fist-to-fist kind of fighting. And the American patriots, to their great credit, fought, fought, fought very well. General Rawl is aroused out of his sleep, comes out into the street to try to lead his troops. He's shot through the chest, okay, and dies uh, later. Now, of course, uh, if he had opened the letter, okay, uh, George Washington's going to be attacking tonight, okay, he had had his troops on guard, he'd been out there waiting, and as they marched into the city, it might have been General uh, Washington who got shot and killed. But that, that lapse, that lack of uh, attention to security, and there was a huge turning point 
and victory was an enormous morale booster for the American cause. It was in desperate, desperate need of a victory. But if he had opened up the letter and shot General Washington instead of the other way around, the entire uh, cause might have failed right there. And that would have been, we would have been uh, uh, singing God uh, Save the Queen instead of uh, God Bless America, et cetera. Wow. I think that's so amazing. I, I think it's so important that we know those little stories. And I'm curious, how did you find these stories? Well, and sometimes it came up in my research, but also I'll flatter myself. I have a very good long term memory. And sometimes it's a story or a book I read 20 or 30 years ago. And it started going through my mind. Well, gee, you know, that was a tiny little mistake that led to this so and so forth. And then remember another one. That's another tiny little mistake. And plus, also you do a lot of research and the whole concept, the whole idea was pretty exciting. You know, that uh, here's the gigantic empire, very powerful, very strong. One little lapse, okay, can cause this domino into another mistake, another mistake, and the whole thing uh, collapses. By the way, the uh, the uh, concept of the butterfly effect comes from uh, uh, Dr. Lorenz, okay, and he, he story real quickly. He was uh, doing a weather analysis, and it was this long number. It had the number plus the decimal, and there was like 18 numbers behind it. Okay? Well, those last five or six numbers, infinitesimally small. He said, well, gee whiz, it's taking so long for the computer to run. I just cut off those last five numbers. No big deal. It won't make much difference. He was amazed, okay, the difference it made in the final outcome. It's a, a first item in a series of a progressive series. It can multiply, multiply, and multiply. So then he came up with a concept, okay, that uh, a butterfly is an overstatement, but a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil can set off a chain reaction that leads to a cyclone in Texas a year and a half, two years later. And that's uh, it's a little bit of a, of a hyperbole, but that's the basic idea. These tiny little things can hit one domino, next domino, next domino, and multiply into something you never realized was going to be uh, such an overwhelming disaster. Oh, and I think it, it's so interesting because, again, I, not to not to emphasize that every single decision you should, you know, be stressed out about, but just it's such an interesting observation about life on how little decisions can really have big impacts. And sometimes you don't even know on the big impacts it can have. So let's talk about another one that we talked about at the top of this interview, which is the German pilot, mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. mistake mm -hmm. that saved Britain and changed the entire course of World War II. Talk yes. about this one. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was fabulous. It's a, it's a fabulous story in, in its importance. But uh, Adolf Hitler, in a rare, rare act of chivalry, had given orders that the uh, cities and civilians of England were not to be bombed. Okay, and so his uh, but they had the pilots were flying over. This is during the, the blitz there, of course, bombing military targets. But one particular night, the two member crew gets lost. Okay, now London is blacked out, so they can't see where London is, and so, so they didn't know where to go. So it's listen, we're going to have to give up and go back uh, over to uh, the continent here. Uh, are you sure we're not? And so are you sure we're not over London? No, we're definitely not over London. We're over some cow pasture. Okay, let's drop our bombs and then go back to go back home. Well, they were over London. So they drop their bombs, boom, 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 boom. Here are civilians being killed uh, by accident, okay? And they fly back, that sort of thing. Of course, they're kind of in trouble with their commander because you're not supposed to drop bombs over the city. Well, the, uh, the, the British have never been known for their easy forgiveness, okay? So they, in retaliation, put together a number of bombs. Okay, you're going to bomb our cities? We're going to bomb your city. So they fly over and they uh, drop bombs on uh, uh, Berlin. Well, okay, the, there were several civilians killed, some children. Okay, but the psychological impact was uh, incredible. Uh, they had promised that uh, Germany would never be bombed by the Allies. Well, okay, then Hitler gives this famous speech about paralyzed a little bit. They drop bombs on us, 100, 200, 300. We'll drop bombs on them, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So he changes his order and we start bombing the heck out of, uh, out of London. Well, very important. Instead of bombing the airfields, instead of bombing the, uh, uh, the, ra the uh, radars installations, they switch, okay, and bomb civilians. That kills a lot of innocent people, but that gave a great breather and opportunity for the Royal Air Force to recover. Okay? And just about less than two weeks later, they switched back. But in that period of time, they were able to reconstruct and recover and, and, and able to survive. And so when they went back to bombing them, they were much stronger and much hardened, hardened targets. And it said that that reprieve was critical and came at a critical time. If it had not been for that, the Royal Air Force might have been crushed and destroyed. And the uh, invasion of Britain might have been successful. And it's identified by many historians as a turning point in the war. A critical, critical time there made a, a terrible uh, mistake and uh, and. Uh, and and change the outcome of World War II. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. So I'm Hitler, made, Hitler made a long list of mistakes. Um, and let me, uh, 
In fact, if you want, if I'm talking about Hitler, let me throw in another mistake. If it is fun, I found fascinating also. Uh, it starts with an antidote. Uh, General Eisenhower, 1944, is in a Jeep with his son, John, who had just graduated from West Point. Okay, and they're driving through Plymouth. Okay, they're getting ready for the huge D Day invasion. And his son looks around and looks at all the storage of gasoline, all the storage of the trucks, all the storage of tanks, all the storage of men. Massive, massive buildup of getting ready for the invasion, uh, uh, which came, of course, in Normandy just a few weeks later. And he says, wow, it's a good thing we have control of the air or the Germans will be able to do huge amounts of damage by bombing this location with all the supplies concentrated in one place. And General Eisenhower somewhat irritably said, well, if I didn't have control of the air, I would not have allowed this concentration to take place. However, he was thinking about conventional bombers and conventional fighter bombers. He had no idea about missiles, okay? And the Germans had just perfected their uh, B-1, their V-1 uh, uh, buzz bomb, and also right behind that, the V-2 supersonic uh, rocket, of which Eisenhower knew nothing. Now, after it, so Hitler was making the decision, uh, we're going to give uh, vengeance against the British people, drop the V1s and the V2s over London. Let's kill as many grandmothers as we can. Let's kill as many children as we can. Let's kill as many school buses as we can. And that was his choice. Well, after the war, General Eisenhower said if V1s and V2s had been dropped on Plymouth, uh, the D-Day uh, invasion would have to have been postponed. Now, the missiles began dropping one week after the invasion, which meant the invasion would have collapsed and have to have been withdrawn. Well, the Germans then could have taken the troops on the Western Front, move them to the Eastern Front. The V1s and V2s could be concentrated on the Russians. The uh, German jet could have been developed uh, further with uh, greater numbers. They might have been able to stabilize the line along the Eastern Front, which would have been a massive difference in the outcome of the war. However, remember that the atomic bomb is in the pipeline, which might have meant instead of being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it would have been dropped on Berlin and Munich or whatever. So ugh, but the, the what ifs are just incredible. And it was an emotional decision made by the Fuhrer who made many foolish emotional decisions that, that changed the outcome of the war. Wow. It's so interesting because, you, again, you think about the little decisions that people make. And again, with the information that they have in front of them, the decision it, it, it seems like the best one at the time, given, again, sometimes faulty information, sometimes just the, the information they had was limited or or their viewpoint on whatever was in front of them was limited. And they weren't able to see past or even think about well, how it was going to impact, you know, or how it would be looked at 10 years, 20 years, 100 years later. So yes. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I know this is a best selling book that you have on Amazon. I'm curious about. Um, whether you have some uh, stories that are in there that talk about something that actually um, was like a happy story. I know we're talking about all these tiny little blunders and, and bad mistakes that people made as a decision. Mm -hmm. But what about a, a decision that someone made that really turned out so beautifully? That's a beautiful question. I love that because it, again, it's kind of a negative book in some ways. I know. Because, oh, I'm sorry, but so anyway, but here's one of my, and I make this point. Here's a, a story that had a happy ending. Okay. Now it, this had to do with the uh, uh, Italy being in the war. They were inside of, of course, the Germans. Okay. And they did not really, their, their sentiment was changing. They really wanted to maybe flip to the other side and join the allies. Well, they, uh, uh, they were in touch with the German military, uh, with the, I meant to say the Italian military, and the idea was to drop paratroopers into near Rome. The Italian army would switch sides and come over and join the American military, and they would attack the Germans, and it would be a giant coup, okay, uh, with, the, uh, with the British on get the cat out of the way here. Can you get it? Okay, the, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, 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 Italians switching side to the Allies, come and capture Rome, a major coup. Well, okay, now this was, the program was presented to the American Allied generals and General Matthew Ridgway, by the way, one of the best generals the United States ever produced, who was a general of the 82nd Airborne, uh, felt very uneasy about this whole thing. He thought it was kind of a harebrained idea that was not going to work. And he, and he kept going up to his superiors say, this is a shaky, this is uncertain, uh, we shouldn't do it. So they kept saying, be quiet, we know what we're talking about. Well, uh, Allied troops will be in Rome three days after this airdrop, don't worry about it. Well, okay, he finally talked to Eisenhower I said, OK, you can send in <coughs> General Maxwell Taylor, a man who spoke a number of languages, bring him in, we're going to infiltrate him into Rome, along with another intelligence officer. They will talk with the Italian army, make sure everything is as it should be, and they're ready to flip sides once the paratroopers come in. So we get these uh, disguised as a prisoner of war, gets into the, uh, Rome, the area, and uh, meets with the uh, president of Italy and also the uh, generals of the Italian army. Turns out, oh, no. 
you know, the Germans are suspicious of the Italians already. They've cut off the gasoline. The Italian army is nowhere near ready to switch sides. They want the whole thing to be canceled. Okay. And he sends a word back. He sends key phrase, situation inoculus, which means, whoa, cancel the entire thing. We're going to have a disaster on our hands. Well, a message comes to Eisenhower, who is known, by the way, for his short temper. So he uh, he starts to write out a message to the Italian army, and he is so angry, he breaks the pencil. Okay, gets another pencil, <laughs> breaks the pencil. He's so angry, and so he had to dictate the message. Okay, about how the announcement that the Italian army has switched sides going forward anyway. Okay, and they end up in the, uh, canceling the airdrop. Okay, now the, the airplanes are out there on the tarmac. Okay, the general has to run out there, waving his arms, waving his arms. Now stop. Stop the invasion, stop the airdrop with the, with the gliders and with the paratroopers. And at the last second, the whole invasion, which would have been a suicide mission and cost the lives of thousands of men for no purpose, is canceled. Okay? And so a, a General Ridgeway and another a general there uh, sit down and have a, 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 a glass of whiskey. And they're just both in tears <laughs> because they say it came so close to thousands of men being killed and a huge disaster, which would have been a huge embarrassment uh, to Eisenhower. So that one was a story with a happy ending, okay, uh, and group I think was over was overcome by a, a very courageous and insightful officer, General Matthew Ridgeway and General Maxwell Taylor. There we are. Wow. Well, and that's one of the things that I'm known for is I'm always looking to find the yay in every day. And I love your book because I think stories are just like parables from the Bible. We learn so much from learning from stories. So yes. I am excited to um, share this with everyone and, and find out, you know, how can we learn from this? And so, first of all, I wanted to ask you, how do you create yays in every day? Yes, uh, a, the, uh, a big believer in emphasizing uh, the positive. OK, uh, there's a lady I knew once very, once who was a doctor who said that she uh, really specialized in trying to take bad situations and turn them into good situations. OK, and if you're persistent and you have the right attitude, many times something looks hopeless. But with persistence, I'm going to quote from uh, General, from uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, he talked about never give in, never give in, never give in, never, never, never. Okay. But a lot of times persistence and follow through and follow through can take a situation and flip it around. But at one point it looked completely hopeless. <laughs> so, and uh, I'll, uh, let me uh, take just a minute uh, in the book talking about positive outcomes. There is a, a reference in the book to a, a, several pages to a book called uh, the checklist manifesto written by Atoll Gawani. Okay. And I'll tell you a story real quickly. He was saying that the way that people proceeded in medical operations, okay, is that you get six or seven or eight years of experience under your belt. You go into the operating room and you just go by, <clears throat> by gut feeling as to what you should be doing and so on and so forth. He said, but we're human, we make mistakes. And so, uh, and so there were too many mistakes, small mistakes were being made. So he said, I wonder how they do this over in the airline industry. Okay. Cause they, it's a very complex situation there. Human beings have to deal with it. I wonder what they, they do. Went over and talked to the people at, uh, at Boeing <clears throat> and went back to an, a, a famous airplane accident in 1935. Two expert pilots, some of the best pilots that Boeing had. Okay, they were test flying the uh, B-299, which later became the Flying Fortress. Anyway, they made a mistake when, and uh, they forgot to flip on the elega uh, elevator yoke, okay, which is part of the automatic pilot system. They take the plane, takes off, it stalls, pancakes down, the two pilots are killed. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. and, and investigation, gee, a little switch, if they just flip that one little switch that they're supposed to do, they just forgot it somehow. What can we do about it? And they went back to an ancient tool, okay, uh, the humble checklist, okay. All oh, right. Let's okay. have a checklist. Okay, now it's just uh, a, a part of the uh, every pilot taking off this checklist, 37 items, 43 items, the two pilots go through it, check, check, this dial is turned this way, this switch is turned, check, check, okay, yep, elevator yep. yoke is turned off, you check, 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 wow. check, 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 make sure human beings can only think about one thing at a time, so this is to make sure that you're thinking about this pathway of different switches and different actions have to take place. Anyway, make a long story short, uh, Dr. Uh, Atul Gawani takes this back and applies it to the medical field uh, it was with a checklist system, okay, and uh, having the plasma ready that's there on the checklist, make sure the antibiotics are there in the checklist, the checklist comes up. Anyway, they were able to reduce fatalities mm -hmm. in the operating room by 36%, an amazing, amazing number, okay? Now, it's standard throughout the industry uh, because of that emphasis on the, the uh, clear basics that are important for human nature in dealing with complex situations. 
Oh my gosh, I, there's, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. We're, we're, we're stuck. We're out of time. So I have to run, but I want to make sure that people know, number one, I'd love to have you back. And you. number two, I want to make sure that people know um, you can go to Amazon and get Jared Knott's book, um, Tiny Blunders, Big Disasters, 39 Tiny Mistakes That Changed the World Forever. Yes, yes, and yes. I'm so grateful, Jared. Thank you. We will definitely have you back. It was such a pleasure. Yeah, TinyBlundersBigDisasters.com. Tiny Blunders. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. And find a way to say yay, yay. every day. Yay. Yay. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Jack Kim.